Hello guys, Rush here with a new Minecraft Redstone video. Today what I have for you is another programmable combination lock. I know I made one of these in the past, but that used 2x3 memory and it was pretty big. This one uses 2x2 two two memory and it's also a lot faster, but unfortunately it all is also pretty big. So that's what we have here. Programmable combination lock made by me x rush 101 and we have mine digger here to help me showcase this also known as the golden crafter check out his channel uh link in the description he is a gold digger um say hi hola hola back to you okay so enough of that said let's get on to the showcasing so let's first start with controls we have the lever here which activates program mode on or off now, um, this will only work if the combination is uh, inputted correctly, and since we have not put in a combination, this will not work at all. We have our buttons, one, two, three, four, our button pad here, and we have our reset button, which is right here. Now, I'd like to point out that this is an order-sensitive combination lock, so what that means is that if the combination is one, two, three, four, um, I, if I put in 4, 3, 2, 1, then the combination will not work. It has to be put in exactly 1, 2, 3, 4. But the combination for this is 1, 4, 2, 3. So let's put it in. 1, 4, 2, 3. There you go. Doors open. And that was pretty fast, if you ask me, uh, for being a programmable combination lock. So once we have inputted the combination correctly we can set program mode on and let's set the combination to one one three four now because this is a four bit combination lock or a combination lock that uses four buttons we must have four bits of data inputted into the system so that means that we cannot have just one button as a combination or just three uh, numbers as a combination is what I mean okay so now our new combination is one one three four there we go uh, works perfectly now let's get on to uh, how this works okay so as you can see here, here we see all of the redstone needed to actually make this work. It looks like a huge mess of just pistons and all that good stuff. But I swear it is a lot easier than it seems. Now, the one that I made in the past was actually um, what I said before is 2 by 3 memory, which is all of this. I'll actually p put up a picture right now of what the one I made before looked like. So you can kind of see the comparison. Although this is taller, this is a lot faster and more compact if you're making larger combination locks, such as one that requires 10 buttons. Um, but the design is infinitely expandable. And as you can see here, you can see our combination right here. So let's get on to how this works. Um, basically, we have this line here that separates everything. Uh, these pistons on top is the memory this is what saves our combination lock that we inputted which is why we can see our combination right here um, below our invisible line right here we have the reader that's what I like to call it the reader this is what reads the combination lock the numbers that are inputted into the system and then it reads it off into our um, sequencer right here or whatever you want to call this um, this is essentially an RS uh, array um, RSNOR array, uh, which makes sure that the combinations are being put inputted correctly. So, uh, for example, here, mine, uh, or yeah, mine, could you put in the number one here? Yep. Do you want me to hit uh, the button? Program on. Yeah, button one. So, as you can see here, because I click button one, and the, um, the number right here is um, the button one right here. Um, a pulse gets sent through this torch right here, which causes this piston to retract upward, allowing this line to turn off, as you can see right here. And when this line turns off, this piston falls down, and all these pistons must fall down before we have this torch come on. Now, if we were to push the button, let's say, uh, th um, three right here. So, mine, could you put in three? Yeah. 
as you can see this piston did not fall down because this piston right here is still on power getting powered and that is basically what makes it order sensitive now I'm just gonna click reset really quick here now um, the problem with this is that you could just push random buttons continuously until you got all the pistons to fall down thus unlocking the door and we don't want that so we add in what um, is called a counter to make it truly order sensitive and what this does is it counts the uh, number of times um, you push a button on the button pad so um, could you put in the correct combination please mine yeah is it a one one three four so as okay. you can see this will count the number of tab attempts So as you could see there, because we got in the right combination, it allowed us our input to, um, our output ra rather, to signal opening up our doors on bottom there. Now, if we were to put in the wrong combination, then um, it just resets the whole thing. And this is our reset line right here. It just resets uh, our sequencer right here, and it resets itself again. So, could you reset the whole combination, please, mine, and put in the wrong combination? Mm. Put in one one three one. So, as you can see, we put he puts in one one three, and then right when he clicks one, because this piston did not fall down, um, our counter sees that it lets the signal go through here, and it resets itself. So that is how that works. So now to the question that everyone is asking how do you make it reprogrammable well uh, to make this easy I'm just gonna type in the right combination here and reset our program mode um, I'm gonna reset our combination to something easier one two three four so like I said before um, this top part is our memory this is what saves the combination and this is when um, kind of advanced redstone comes in if you know anything about memory or RAM then this should be pretty simple but for those of you who have no clue this is gonna be a little bit more complicated but just to simplify it we have our memory right here okay and then our data is inputted through these lines on top here as you can see this represents this line represents button 1 button 2 button 3 button 4 okay when we set program mode on right here it sends a signal through here allowing us um, to actually access those uh, data lines up above by um, turning off these repeaters allowing the flow of redstone connectivity so now every time we push a button here it's also going to send a signal to our shift register which um, shifts over data here saving the information below uh, which is gets represented here. So as you can see, since I turned on program mode one, we have um, this line cleared. So mine, could you please push the button one? Yeah. So as you can see there, because he pushed the button one, it wrote in data the button one down right here. Now could you push the button two, please? Mm hmm. So as you can see here, I put two here. Don't uh, pay attention to this because this bit right here will be deleted uh, once you finish the combination. Um, now, mine, could you put in the number one? Yep. Thank you. So as you can see there, one got ri written down here. And then um, just to point out on here, this is also getting shifted over, which is saving it down here. Um, which is sh saving these uh, pistons down here. And now, um, could you push the button four? There you go. So our new combination is one, two, one, four. And now we can turn program mode off. Click reset. And our new combination has now been implicated. So, um, to simplify this, the memory down here for kind of the newbies of redstone, um, imagine this whole line here as block update detectors, each piston facing down as block update detectors. Now, to be able to save data, we have to update the pistons to actually get the pistons to go downward. That is what the shift register does 
over here. Um, it turns off these regular pistons right here, allowing them to retract backwards, updating each of these pistons, uh, thus writing down our newly saved combination down here. And then once again, the reader reads it off to make sure that the right combination is being in, uh, um, inputted. And then there you go. So that is how my programmable combination lock works. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, tutorial might be coming. I don't know if I want to rebuild this. This thing is kind of annoying to build. But thanks for watching, guys. If you like videos like this, then be sure to check out my channel. I just recently hit my 150th video mark, which is just a lot of videos I have on my channel. But, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos and to subscribe. I will see you guys later. Mm -hmm. See you guys. Bye, and check out my Diggers channel. <laughs>